All right. So let's get this recording going and then we'll start with the first one. <clears throat> <sighs> All right, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to clear various rounds of Masked Carnival. Uh, I will be going through all of the rounds, but for starters, I want to be able to show you guys that you can clear uh, rounds 25 and 30 with just the base spells you can get from the overworld, so you don't really need a lot to get started. And uh, that'll help you get through all of the job quests up till you can get to around level 70. It'll unlock the Blue Mage log for you, which will give you credit for clearing dungeons as Blue Mage or a party of Blue Mages. Um, as you can see on my hotbar, I currently only have spells that you can get in the overworld. And I'm going to be using those to go through uh, rounds 25 and 30 for starters. So... One of the first things that I highly recommend, um, even though it's not a spell you get in the overworld, get Aetherial Mimicry. It makes everything a world of a, uh, a world easier. Um, it's not too hard to get. It's from the first boss inside of uh, Pharaoh's Serious Hard. And it basically is just free damage upgrade for you. All right, so the first one we're going to do is round 25, uh, Dirty Rotten Ozomagia. And this one is notoriously bad because it is basically an entry barrier for people who want to get into Blue Mage. In order to get past the level 50 job quest, you have to beat him. The first thing to note is that he basically starts off every match by making himself reflect either physical damage or magic damage. Act 1, he always reflects physical damage. So you're going to see me using basically Sonic Boom, Electrogenesis, and ja uh, Glower this entire fight. So Ice Spikes is the move that he uses. Uh, anything you see that he uses that says Apocalyptic basically means if you get hit by it, you're going to get Doom. Ram's Voice is a common attack. You see uh, you go out for that. You go in for Dragon's Voice. Uh, it's your standard Chimera attacks. There's Apocalyptic Bolt again. All right, Plane Cracker is going to be a... Uh, growing donut so there he used it and then it has a larger version ram's voice we go out and then he'll immediately do dragon's voice we go in planes cracker so he's going to do a circle followed by donuts And he followed that up with a Konal. You have plenty of time to get out of all of that, so don't don't worry about constantly attacking. As you can see, we're doing pretty good damage to him. Ram's voice, we're gonna go out. Follows it with Dragon's voice, so we go back in. So there's Plane Cracker again, circle, followed by donuts, and a cone. Oh, this time it's a lane. So he'll swap things up like that. Um, so here he's going to do it again, but we've killed him. So that's Act 1. Act 2, he will start off by making himself immune to magic attacks. Uh, if you have a spell such as um, Song of Torment from Pharaoh Serious Normal, you actually have time to apply that before he gets off his Reflect. And that dot damage will be really helpful in knocking him down. Now, because he's going to Reflect Magic Damage, 
you're going to see me using drill cannons most of the time. Anytime I can get close to him, I might use triple trident because it's a good melee attack. But drill cannons is pretty nice. Um, the big thing to look out for here is he's going to throw fire angons out. Those need to die as soon as they come out. So here he goes. They also don't really get hurt by uh, magic attacks. Okay, so both of those are dead. So now we just go back to attacking him. Now here he's using Ram's voice, so we go out. Oh, I got hit by that. And I'm going to get hit by Dragon's voice as well, and that'll kill me. Don't be afraid to, uh, don't be afraid to, to die and lose. It happens. Um, mostly focus on just making sure that if you're trying to deal as much damage as possible, if you don't think you have time to get out of the cast, uh, to get out of his spell that he's casting, stop casting your spell. The fight can go on as long as you need it to. You have more than enough time. The bigger things you need to worry about are making sure you get hit as little as possible because your only way of really healing is White Wind, and White Wind is not the best healing spell. So here we have Plane Cracker. Alright, so I'm basically just going to get through this as fast as I can to get us back to where we were. I'm going to get hit by that. Yep. So now here I can use White Wind. And if you find that the paralysis is too bad, Exuviation will get rid of any detrimental effects that have a bar under them. So Exuviation is absolutely a great spell to bring into this. Uh, that is, I would tell you it's a spell that needs to be on your hotbar at all times. So we have Ram's voice, we're going out. Followed by Dragon's voice, so we go in. Now, if you find yourself in a time where you want to dodge, you can use, um, You can use Bristle to boost your next attack, but honestly, most of the time, you're probably just better off spamming the attack button. Now see, I got a little ballsy there. I stood in the Apocalyptic Roar, waiting for the second of the donut rings from Plains Cracker to go off. Then I moved. You absolutely have plenty of time to dodge. Uh, so here we are in Act 2 again. You basically just have to keep your eye on what he's doing and just priority focus on getting out of his attacks. So here in Act 2 again, the Blazing Angons are the most important things. They need to go away as soon as they show up. So there's that ram's voice, that's what got me last time. Come back in for dragon's voice. So move out for ram's voice. Now, when he does Ram's Voice, that's a great time to counter it with Triple Trident shortly after. You can see that did a huge chunk of his health right there.
Now, I'm going to ignore these this time because he was so close to death. But if you're not quite getting the damage up and he throws out that second wave of fire engines, he'll do four. Absolutely focus on those before you focus on him. If you feel like you can get him down before he finishes getting all four, then go for it. So this is going to be the tricky fight. This one, he combines everything he's done so far. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find out which spell he's going to, or which spell type he's going to reflect. Then you have to start focusing on dodging mechanics. There's one big mechanic um, to dodge, and that's going to be the meteor drop. We'll talk about how to bait it and get out of it when we get to that part. So here he's doing repelling spray. So then we're going to do physical attacks because he's repelling magic. So here he's doing Ram's voice, so we're going to go out. We go in for Dragon's voice. Triple Trident's not up, or I would have used that there. Apocalyptic Roar. Triple Trident is up now. Well, that's why I went. Okay, so here he's casting Charybdis. Charybdis is going to put up tornadoes in the four corners, and then he's going to use various attacks there. What we want, however, is this. So here he's using Web. So now we're going to use Loom and Loom again to get out of Meteor. That Meteor will hit you very hard. Okay, so now he's swapped over to Ice Spikes, which is going to reflect physical damage. So now we're going to swap over to Magic Damage. Here's Planes Cracker. Okay, so I got hit by one Planes Cracker there, but as you can see, it didn't do a lot of damage to me. Here he's going to do the Planes, uh, planes Cracker combo again. We easily dodged it. The Charybdis is gone by now, and there goes the Meteor. So now we're back to an open playing field. He's going to do Charybdis again, but uh, I'm going to show you guys a trick. I'm going to get out of that, actually. Okay, so we'll get out of this meteor. So now I'm going to use Toad Oil and Bristle and... Oh, what did he put on himself? Oh, he put Repelling Spray. Never mind. So I will use Whistle and Final Sting. So Final Sting is really strong, but it also will kill you. If you use Whistle, it boosts its attack, and then on top of that, you just hit him. You have to pay attention to what he's reflecting, and as long as he dies, even if you die, you still get the clear. So don't underestimate the power of Final Sting there. Um, and that's basically round 25 with basic spells. It's not that hard. I did have a death. It happens. Um, focus more on trying to dodge mechanics than dealing damage. As you get comfortable with the fight, the damage will come easier and easier. Uh, so with all that said, let's move on to round 30. Round 30 is much easier. It's much more forgiving if you take damage, and it's much more... It has much less, um, like, massive things you have to worry about. The big thing to worry about from this is going to be in round... Th or Act 3. But, surprise, surprise, you could just ignore it all. We're looking at another time situation, and as long as you don't mind it taking a little longer... This is absolutely doable. So I'm going to go ahead and start this off with uh, Electrogenesis. It's a good attack. Okay, so he's using Magic Drain, which means I, now I'm going to focus on physical attacks on him. Here he's going to use Ankle Graze, which is going to bind you. 
Exuviation removes that. Then he's going to cast multiple circles. The first one comes down, the second, and then the third soon follow, uh, with a fourth shortly there. Then he's going to position himself and drop a bunch of bombs. What you're going to do is you're going to look for the opening and where there's not a bomb. Prepare yourself. He knocks you into that opening if you like place yourself in the right way. And then he's going to do ankle graze again. Now he's going to repeat all of those attacks on loop. That's it. That's everything for this round. So now you just get in damage where you can. Here he's going to drop the bombs. This is a good chance to come up to him and use triple trident. Rubber bullets, so let's prepare ourselves to get knocked back. Here he goes with ankle graze again. Exuviation to get rid of it. Get out of hyperdrive. Two, three, four. Now he's going to drop bombs. This is a very repetitive fight, but as you can see, it's very simple. Once again, we prepare ourselves to get knocked back. Stand in the knockback. Exuviation to get rid of bind. Get out of hyperdrive. He drops two, three, four, and then jumps. Here comes rubber bullet. This time it's gonna be on the opposite side, but we're still good. He's reapplying magic drain. So basically this whole attack or this whole phase is going to be figuring out when you can get away with damage. I got hit by one of the hyperdrives there and you can see it dealt next to no damage. It's not that much of a threat. Placement for the knockback. And we should have him here. All right, that's act 1. Like I said, fairly simple. Um he has a few mechanics that he does, and then he does them on loop. Act 2 is going to be much of the same, if I'm not mistaken. For Act 2, he will uh, swap it up to be weak to magic attacks. So let's go ahead. We can start with off guard, or bristle, for our first attack to be more powerful. Okay, so here he's going to use just a triple conal. And now he's going to start getting into some weird mechanics. For these, you kind of have to know what you're doing. So he's going to do a knockback and a big ring around him with a whole bunch of circles. You basically just have to position yourself to where you can run back into the circle. Now he's going to drop a whole bunch of fire and some ice. The thing to know is to look for where the ice is. I didn't quite get there in time. But there's a gap in the ice that you can get to that will uh, basically keep you safe so that you don't get frozen like that. Then he's going to jump around and do a bunch of conals. So, interesting thing here. We can actually hit him with Tingle run up to him and hit him with triple trident for massive damage. So now we're getting back into his rotation, which is going to be swift steel. Look for a space where you can get knocked back and then run back in and be safe. Follows it up with spark steel, which is going to drop a bunch of fire circles. And then ice balls. Okay, so here we're going to be in the safe zone. So that time we didn't get frozen. Again, even if you get frozen or hit by those, you can see I've taken some damage. A single white wind is enough to get you back. And we've already got him down to roughly 35%. So just keep dodging his conals as he does them, and then he'll jump back to the center and repeat the loop again. 
during these conals is the the main time you're going to focus on getting uh, damage off on him. So now we're back into the center. So there's those. Oh, he pushed me out into the electrocution. But again, even with that, a single white wind is enough to recover you. So there's fire, bigger fire circles. There's ice. Okay, I know I'm not going to make it over there in time, so I'm going to take this. So I got hit by two there. He's going to start doing his conals at me. The ice will wear off just in time to let me get out. And a white wind to heal. So you have plenty of time to recover, even if you get hit by the ice. Don't let it get you down if you think, oh, I messed up, I'm going to get hit by the ice. That's it for me. And one more should finish him off. All right, and that's Act 2. You can see Act 2 took a little bit longer, but again, if you focus on dodging the attacks more than dealing damage, you'll have him down in no time. So Act 3 is going to be a mix of both. Um, the big thing here is he's going to pull in clones. Now, the clones have an elemental weakness that you'll see shown above their head. If you have uh, spells of those elements, great. But I believe one of the first ones is fire, and there's only like three fire spells for Blue Mage. They're not great. You do not want to use self-destruct. That's one of them. Uh, but you could use Fire Engine, you could use Flamethrower. <clears throat> I believe the newer uh, Missile Punch is a fire spell, and then there's the Primal spell uh, from Ifrit. So, let's go ahead and we're going to start this out the gate uh, with some big damage by using Tingle, because I think he's going to reflect magic, yeah. And then we'll run up on him. And we're going to use Triple Trident with Whistle. And that dealt some major damage. Oh, that was a magic attack. So here he summoned his first clone. It's weak to ice. You could use Northerlies to get rid of that. Uh, but all his clone is going to do is going to mimic the attacks we've already seen. And again, if you focus more on dodging, you can ignore the clones and... Surprise, surprise, the clones just disappear over time. So there I was bound. I'm going to use Exuviation to get rid of that. His clone is going to use uh, Spark Steel again. So there the clone disappeared. So now he's pulling up a Wind Clone. Lucky for us, we have Sonic Boom. Ooh, that's nasty. Okay, so there I just killed his clone. So we get in another uh, super good uh, triple trident there. I think I accidentally started to cast my raise spell. I must have accidentally double tapped. There's the fire one. And he's going to do the ice orbs, but it's a lot easier when you're only focusing on the ice orbs. So there we dodge those. Now we just have a bunch of conals. Let's get out of this bind. He's going to do ice orbs again. Again, we can see where we need to position ourselves. I moved in really quick on that and ended up getting hit. There goes the fire one. All right, he's going to use the bombs with rubber bullets, so we just need to place ourselves. 
And now that we're out of that, I feel confident enough to heal. So there goes Magic Drain again. So we're going to keep focusing on our physical attacks. I'm going to go ahead and heal up one more time, because that's the downside of White Wind. Is it... Oof, that hurt a lot. Um, see, and like there, I consider that like I messed up a lot right there. But, surprise, surprise, it didn't really hurt too much. So we can go down to this safe spot. And I still managed to get hit. But now you can see he's basically just mimicking his act too. Uh, now that all of his clones are gone. And the best part about all of this is now that I've gotten him down to about 30% HP. Uh, because he's not reflecting magic, I'm going to show you guys the other one where you use Toad Oil and then Bristle. Let's get up kind of close to him and use Self-Destruct. Oh, and see, I didn't quite finish him off there. Had I gotten him down maybe another percent, that would have been a clean win. But again, that's a risky thing. If you don't think you can do it, if you don't think he's down far enough, 25% uh, should be a good one. But let's go through, through uh, let's go ahead and go through and clear this one more time. This will give you guys a chance to see the first two acts again. So again, first act, very simple. I'm actually going to start it the same way I started the third act. We're going to use um, Tingle, followed by Whistle, followed by Triple Trident. So here comes Tingle, followed by Whistle. Now he has Magic Drain up, so physical attacks are important. Triple Trident. And you can see that dealt 15% of his damage, of his HP pool right there. So now we're going to Exuviation to get out of the bind. He drops a circle, followed by three more. Two, three. He jumps. He's going to drop bombs, and we're going to look to see where the bomb gap is. It's going to be over on this side. Get ready for knockback. Pushes us into the safe zone, and he starts repeating. Get out of the first circle, we'll cast a spell. Hit him with a tingle so that our drill cannons will deal more damage. Look for the gap, gap is on the same side. Get ready for knockback. Here comes ankle graze, exuviation. Once you learn the mechanics, specifically for round one, it becomes a, a joke. It's barely even a fight. All right, so we're gonna triple try in him again. He's going to do Magitek Explosives. It's on this side. Dodge the bombs. He throws up Magic Drain, but oh, too little, too late. He is down. So now we'll go back into Act 2, and uh, you guys watching can get a feel more for some of the dodges that you're going to want to do, because again, those exact same mechanics will come back in Act 3. So, let's go ahead and we'll start the same way. We'll do Tingle, Whistle, we'll move out of the attack and throw out a Drill Cannons. Alright, so this is going to be the bunch of circles with Knockback. You want to get right up on him for that one. This one, he's going to put a circle around him, so you want to kind of get away. Then he's going to drop a whole bunch more circles and the ice balls. 
you just got to find where that gap is and stand kind of in between them as close to the lightning ring as you can, and you won't get frozen. Oh, he moved out of range of me. So we can get this off, we can whistle, and then here, we'll triple trident for big damage. Almost 20% damage right there. So then this is going to be the knockback with circles, so just find a spot, get knocked back, and run back into the main big circle, the big donut. Then he'll do the big, uh, the circle around him, lots of big fire splashes, and ice cubes. So we've already seen, it's going to be like right over here. No problem. We'll get off another tingle and whistle combo. Now, when you're trying to do a combo that boosts your attack, it's important to note that Tingle uh, will boost your next physical attack, but itself is a magic attack. So if he's reflecting magic, you can't use that. Additionally, uh, between Bristle and Whistle, Bristle raises the potency of any next ma uh, attack, whereas Whistle only raises the potency of the next... Uh, physical attack. See, I knew I was going to get hit by something there, but I also knew he had so little HP, it was just more beneficial for me to take the hit and move on to the next round. So now we're back into Act 3. And again, we're going to have to deal with this clones. Like I said, the first clone is going to be an Ice clone. If you come in with Northerlies, you can use that, but the important thing to know about Northerlies it is a cone in front of you, meaning you're going to have to get real up close and personal with the clone to be able to use it. So we'll start this one off the same way with Tingle, Whistle, he uses Magic Drain, we run up and hit him with Triple Trident. And there's his clone. His clone's going to do the knockback, I believe. Alright, so now we have Bind put on us, we get out of that. Clone's gonna do the knockback again. Now remember, we have circles that were baiting on us. So, for that part, we kind of wanted to keep moving a little bit more. But there goes the clone. Alright, I can get off another Tingle combo on him. See, we've already got him down to 50%. I'm being a bit more bold this time and attacking more frequently. I'm also ignoring this uh, wind one this time. Here we're getting ankle graze put on us. We just dodge right out of that. Now remember, this is going to be one for hyperdrive and then three more shortly after. The wind clone is gone, so no big deal there. He's putting on Magic Drain, but I got off Tingle just in time. And here comes Triple Trident. So now we've already got him down to 33% HP, and he's just now getting to his third clone. The clone is doing the Ice. I didn't get out of it in time. I took a lot of damage there. But it's okay. Like I said, you get plenty of time to recover. So I'll use White Wind twice. 
exuviation to get rid of ankle uh, ankle graze. Oh, I'm just gonna want to hug him. So again, I took a lot of damage there, but his clone should be going away. We're gonna figure out where he's gonna send me with the knockback. And then we'll heal. And now we're back to round two mechanics by themselves. Alright, I know I'm going to take this, so I'm going to specifically position to where I should only get hit by one of those deep freezes. He's going to start doing conals. And we go back on the attack. Now, his uh, magic absorb has worn off, so we're going to get in here with... Uh... You jumped away before it got off, but we'll do our triple trident here. He's almost gone. One more should do it. And there he goes. So even without doing self-destruct uh, or final sting, you very much can just dodge the attacks and get through him with no problem. Then there's round 30. I'm probably going to end up devoting an entire video to round 30 because... who oh boy. It's annoying. It's frustrating. Um, it has to do with a lot of patience, focusing on dodging, and I, for that one, you're not missing out on a whole bunch if you don't clear it right away. So I would say absolutely go after some more spells. Uh, but that's going to end this video covering specifically just Ozomagia and... Uh, Siegfried, rounds 25 and 30, with the basic overworld spells. So now I'm going to go ahead and lead into another video series where I'll be doing each of the rounds with all spells, just to kind of give you a guide of how to get through those. Alright, let me turn off this, swap to my spell loadout, and then change that. Hey there, rainy night. Uh, I'm basically doing some in-between prep. I'm making videos that I'm going to put up on YouTube that are going to be video guides for all the rounds of Mass Carnival. And uh, basically, I'm just now kind of prepping in-between with uh, spells that you'll want to take in. All right, so let's see here. Alright, I'm going to start my recording up for YouTube, and then we'll get on into the regular rounds. 
All right, welcome back. We're going to be doing a few more rounds of Mass Carnival now to show you guys just how to clear everything with no problems. Um, a lot of Mass Carnival rounds are going to be gimmicks or straight up fights. And it might be a little hard to distinguish one from the other. The first thing we're going to do though, Ethereal Mimicry. It's just free DPS. It's great. It's fantastic. Guarantee you should have it. If you don't, things will go slower, but they're still very much doable. So, we're going to start off with just the first round. It's just your basic fight. Now, I'm going to be going into this with a bunch of spells. I have all the Blue Mage spells. Uh, I will be showing you on the ones that are gimmicks. Some easy, kind of cheap ways to deal with everything. But for this, we're just going to focus on just killing everything. Now, you can pull these enemies one at a time, if you really feel like you need to. Um, and there, I'm just using Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom's an overworld spell. So it's super easy to get. It casts quick, deals decent damage. There, I got poison on me, but I can get rid of that real quick with Exuviation. Now for this big guy, I'm going to set up quite a good number of attacks. Here I'm using the Primal Attack from Suzaku. And that kills him. So, not a lot to it. It's a straightforward fight. If you have attack spells, just go for it. I'm going to try and group these videos into sets of five. This one might be kind of short because the five video, the five rounds are going to be kind of short. Okay, so here's Act 2. Act 2 is supposed to teach you about elemental weaknesses. The idea is you want to go in with a wind, uh, wind, fire, lightning, earth, ice, and water spell. Now, I'm going to show you guys all a little trick. So... The first three are weak to wind, ice, and earth. Great. I happen to have all three of those. The secondary three, we're not going to care about. Because there's a trick. So let's start with the wind. We'll pull these again, one at a time. Now, the thing to know about puddings, uh, puddings, flans, any of these slime monsters like this, is that they don't take a lot of damage from physical attacks. So now this one's going to be ice, so I'm going to bait it to get it close to me, and then I'm going to start using Ram's Voice, which deals just a circle around me of ice damage. And it also applies Deep Freeze. Deep Freeze is a fantastic debuff. It basically just locks your opponent down they can't do anything now for earth we have one of the best spells it's a uh, serpanaka it is ravana's primal spell it deals big damage so then we go into act two act two you're supposed to be using water fire and lightning i have those i don't think i've got fire set on my hot bar but uh I'm going to show you real quick why it's not going to matter. So we're just going to go ahead and aggro all three of these guys. Come on, get, uh, get them all together here. There we go. And remember, I told you Deep Freeze just shuts them all down. Well, then there's this wonderful spell called Ultra Vibration. Anything afflicted with Deep Freeze dies. There are a few instances where things don't, but they just die. So, that just gets you straight through the end of that round. Uh, you will be seeing Deep Freeze, uh, well, Ram's voice for Deep Freeze with Ultra Vibration very often in these videos. Ultra Vibration has a long cooldown, so anything with multiple acts, you'll be seeing us use it in the second or third acts, depending on where it shows up. But most of the time it doesn't matter. When you go into a new round of Mars Carnival, it resets it. So the next one's going to be Waiting for Golem. This is, again, a straightforward fight. 
he has a water weakness, you can go in with that. I'm not really going to place a water spell. There's a few on there. The basic spell you start with is a water spell. But, uh... Interesting thing to check. Just go in. Use Ram's voice. He fully resists deep freeze. So now we're just going to focus on just dealing damage. A good combo I like to use is Off Guard, Song of Torment. Drop uh, Feather Rain, which is the primal skill from Garuda. And then you can just drop as many primal spells as you want. And that's a good way to deal a lot of damage right out the gate. And you can see here, Serpanaka does nothing to this guy. Uh, we'll use Condensed Leaper to give him a weakness. And then I'm going to just hit him with some big magic attacks. So here he's dropping a puddle on the ground. It's easy enough to dodge, so it's not that big a deal. Um, you can technically use Flying Sardine to get out of it to where he won't place it. But you shouldn't really need it. Now, the spell that I'm using a whole bunch here is Abyssal Transfixion. There's a bunch of uh, generic potency 220 skills. Uh, that was Obliterate. You do want to use Flying Sardine to cancel that. But yes, um... There's a bunch of spells that have potency of 220. Abyssal Transfixion is non-elemental, meaning that in most cases here, it'll work against everything. And uh, it also inflicts paralysis. It's just good. All right, so we've just been beating him down. Time for another off guard, Song of Torment. There's Obliterate again, we'll get rid of that. Place another Feather Rain, drop Magic Hammer because our NP is not at 100%. Again, you can do this with as many or as few spells as you want. You can see this is more or less just a boss fight. His moves are very telegraphed, they're very easy to dodge. Just focus on uh, getting in the damage. If you see yourself taking a lot of damage, you can use White Wind to heal. Make sure that you use Flying Sardine whenever he tries to use Obliterate. And we'll get this some kicks to end it. Alright, and that's round three. So, round four has some oddities to it. In the first act, you're just going to fight some basic enemies. In the second act, you're going to fight a uh, kind of Dolahan-type monster. Basically, he's just the uh, suit of armor that attacks you. He will use an uh, ability that if he uses it, it'll make him stronger with higher defense and... If he uses it, I believe, three times, you get an achievement. If he uses it four times, you can't kill him. Uh, he has a weakness to lightning, so that's good to know. Let's go ahead and roll on into it. So, for these first three, I don't really feel like putting up with them. I'm just going to freeze them, and Ultra Vibration. Moving on to the boss fight. Now, there is a two minute cooldown on Ultra Vibration. As long as you don't attack the first enemy, or the, uh, the enemy that spawns in, you can just stand here forever, and nothing will happen. You have 30 minutes, and I mean, it took us, what, 30 seconds to clear the first act, so I think you could spare two minutes of those 30 minutes if you wanted to wait for Ultra Vibration to come back. Uh, but we're just going to fight this guy normal. So we'll drop 
this. We get in some Serpent Nakas. So he's going to use Grand Strike, and then he'll follow it up with more Grand Strikes faster. There's a second, and then it'll be a third. So here you put a whole bunch of enemies. Now you see, you can Deep Freeze him. So if you want to fight the first round, or even if you want to just wait, you could probably Ultra Vibration him as well. Some enemies are immune. I don't know if he's immune or not. This honestly is not too terribly hard of a boss fight. Here he's doing uh, Grand Strikes again. So there's a second. We'll bait out the third. And then we'll hit him with some big spells. So now, you may not have seen it, but he started to use a spell called Magitek Field. I've been hitting him with uh, Abyssal Transfixion, which applies um, Paralysis, and Paralysis can stun enemies out of their stunnable attacks. So he just never used it because he had Paralysis on him. Alright, so then we have the Three Penny Turtles. This is your first true gimmick one, and I have a spell on my hotbar specifically for this. So these enemies all have about 900 HP, and they all have extremely high defense, but they do next to nothing to you. So I'm going to use the spell 1000 Needles. It has a really long cast time, but... uh. It deals exactly a thousand damage. I guess they have more than 900. They have, must have uh, about 2,000. But still, six casts of this, that's nothing. You're fine. Thousand Needles number one. Here comes Thousand Needles number two. They do nothing to you. This is literally just a race against the clock. Now, to show you, 9 damage, 13 damage. You're not going to get through this fight if you try and fight them with normal spells. It's, it's not going to happen. 1,000 needles deals 1,000 damage. It's just that easy. Alright, so that's going to end my video for uh, Carnival Rounds 1 through 5. And then uh, we'll come back in another video and do 6 through 10. Alright. Let me look at what 6 through 10 is and see if I need anything special. What do I want here? So many choices. I just don't know what to pick. I'll take Tingle.
All right, here we're gonna go. We're gonna start recording. All right, so now we're back. We're picking up where we left off. We have uh, round six through ten of Masked Carnival. Round six is one of my favorites. It's really funny when you figure out what they're going for. This is a gimmick fight. It's so dumb. So, anyone here playing Final Fantasy has probably seen these attacks. Um, we're going to sneak around here to get this Katobopus. These attacks with the giant eye symbol. It basically means that if you're looking at the enemy, you're going to have a bad time. You'll notice that these Mandragoras are dealing next to no damage to me, but they're afflicting me with blind. Fun story, when you're blind, you can look at the eye attacks and you don't take damage. So now we just kill the Catopopus. While constantly being afflicted with blind. There's a second one around the corner, so we'll just go ahead and take care of him. Once again, he's going to be using sight-based attacks, but I am blind, so doesn't matter. And then all that's left is the orc Mandragora, which again, almost just feels like a shame, but there he goes. Yes, these are absolutely going up on YouTube. Uh, they will be on YouTube and timestamped so that you can see all the different uh, stages if you're looking for a specific one. All right, so this is going to be the second act, which again, same thing, just more enemies. They're going to hit you with sight-based attacks that if you're blind, do nothing. I guess let's just go ahead and start with my big damage. And then all that's left is the Mandragora. Remember people, don't, don't bully these people. They're just, they're just trying to make a career. We're coming in here making a mockery of their masked carnival. All right, so now we're gonna go into round seven. Lo and behold, it's another gimmick. Now for this one, we are going to need specific spells. So let's go ahead and we'll go in and we will take off Tingle. We're going to need Sticky Tongue. And I will show you why Sticky Tongue is going to be super helpful for specifically Acts 2, especially Act 3. So let's go ahead and roll into it. Act 1, it's a simple explanation. If you have Sonic Boom, use it on the Lava Slime. It dies, it blows up, it kills the Ice Sprites. Act complete. That's to teach you, Lava Slimes explode when they die. So now we're going to go into Act 2. Now for these ones, the Lava Slimes are kind of far away, and the Ice Sprites are annoyingly placed. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up like this, and we're going to use Sticky Tongue. Just uh, yoink that slime right over to us. Get a bit of far away. Sonic Boom kills the sprite. Now, we're going to go through this pattern, and we're just going to yoink the slime, run away, Sonic Boom. The slimes won't attack you, and the ice sprites won't aggro onto you unless you attack them. So we yoink, we run, Sonic Boom. And last but not least, 
We yoink. We run. Sonic boom. It's just that easy. All right, so that's act two down. Act three is gonna be much of the same. You may want to play it a bit safer than I'm going to do, but this is uh, one of the Blue Mage Masked Carnival rounds that gets pulled up for weekly challenges all the time, so I'm very familiar with this one. We're going to stand over here. We're going to start using Sticky Tongue. We're going to Sticky Tongue all three of these slimes, and then we're going to stand behind this wall. These towers will hit you with uh, low voltage, which has a long cast time, but it hurts. It will kill you. All right, so I didn't quite get out of it for that one, but it's okay, because we're gonna kill the tower there. When the towers die, they, uh, they immediately move into casting a large AoE, and that large AoE is guaranteed instant death. So we're going to stand behind the wall, come back out, slime one, slime two, slime three, hide behind the wall, sonic boom a slime, one, two, three, gladiatorial note is down, it uses its uh, large AoE that you have to be behind the wall to, uh, to not get hit by, and we're clear. So even with me making a mistake there and getting hit by uh, low voltage once, it's piece of cake. Alright, so now we're going to go into Bombity of Errors, which is much like... Um, what we literally just did. It's kind of a gimmick, and once you know the gimmick, it gets just that much easier. Everything here is gonna have a weakness to wind that we're gonna focus on. You'll notice that there's a lot of weakness to fire as well, but uh, hey, watch this. Oh, more things that die. When the arena bombs die, they explode. When the arena snulls die, they explode and freeze. Now, you might be wondering, does freeze mean deep freeze? So there's our guy. He will recover HP if you don't attack him at least once. Uh, and he will suffer from deep freeze. He's going to start attacking me now, but that's going to deep freeze him again. That knocked off the other side as well. So Ultra Vibration doesn't affect him. But it's always worth a shot. However, he's weak to wind. So if you have Sonic Boom, just throw that at him. So here he's using Burst. You have plenty of time to use Flying Sardine to cancel that. And get back at him with the uh, Sonic Booms. I'm going to drop Feather Rain on him because he's weak to that. Sap is a big circle. Just don't stand in it. Hit him with a big attack. Get out a sap. Start throwing in some primal skills. And there we have it. I'm going to give myself bonus points for beating him by throwing a fish at his face. Not recommended. But, uh, yeah. Focus on hitting him with wind damage, make sure you attack him after you freeze him, and you're all set. Alright, so now we're going to go into round 9. To kill a Mocking Slime. So, if you remember, uh, round 2, we had the... Basically, 6 different pudding enemies, each with an elemental weakness. To kill a Mocking Slime is much like that. But instead, he's going to spawn in the slimes with each of the different weaknesses. You can choose to um, bring in the spells of all those types and focus on them, because they most likely will need to die. But if you can get enough damage on him, 
He's not a problem. You can kill him before anything happens. Alright, so first things first. Let's see if we can freeze this guy. We can't. So now he's going to start putting dark puddles out. Oh, Abyssal Transfixion does nothing to him. So let's move on to magic attacks. Now, the big thing to know is Golden Tongue. Never let him cast Golden Tongue. So here we have our first ad. It's already dead, as you can see. Here comes the second ad. Oof, it's a fire-based enemy. So, fun fact, you actually don't have to kill the ads. You only have to kill the main guy. And with as low as we've gotten him, I can basically just focus on him here, make sure he doesn't cast Golden Tongue. Here comes in another add, but we've almost got him here, and he's dead. Now, again, he's gonna spawn in those adds. If you feel like you're not dealing enough damage and you really want to clear this, just go in with a spell of every type, and you can kill the adds, uh, just make sure that you're watching him, the, the main guy, so that he doesn't cast Golden Tongue. If he casts Golden Tongue, he's going to get damage down and also uh, magic damage for him up. So he will hurt you more and take less damage. It doesn't last forever. It only lasts about 30 seconds or so. But it's annoying enough that it's a big problem. Okay, so on for the last one for this round, which is going to be round number 10, A Little Night Music. Uh, I think I said in the previous video that Gentleman Prefers Swords has an achievement to it. I was actually thinking about this guy. It's basically just the second act of Gentleman Prefers Swords by itself. He's going to cast an ability. We don't want him to cast that ability. And if he does cast the ability... Um, then it's going to make it a little bit harder for us. He's tiny. Every time he uses the ability, he gets bigger. So we're just going to try and make sure that we don't let him do that. All right, so he's going to use Cloud Cover, which is going to be a circle on the ground. And King's Will, that's what we want to stop. Now I know some of these may seem a little unfair because I do have all of the spells and I'm coming in here with some really big things. But most all of these, as long as you have the, the gimmick to them, you can get through it. So like for this guy, the gimmick is basically making sure you have Flying Sardine and not ever letting him get off King's Will. And just like that, we're done. So that's basically been rounds uh, 6 through 10. So we'll come back in the next video for rounds uh, 11 through 15. All right, let me look at 11 through 15 and see what I need. Gotcha. Okay. 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 Oof. I need a lot here. <laughs> okay. 
Got that one. Nice spikes. Should be fine for that. Uh, I have no room for that. Need acorn bomb. I'm going to go ahead and start up my recording. Okay, now we're back at it again. This is going to be rounds 11 through 15 of Mast Carnival. First things to note here, we're going to be doing uh, round 11. Some like it excruciatingly hot. This is another gimmick one. I don't like this one. For this one, the bombs are all going to have a really long cast. And the goal is to group them together, because every time you hit them, the cast resets. So, like, to start this off, I'm going to run way off to the side. And I'm going to start using my cast here. It's going to all... all spells will have knockback on these guys as well. So here you can see I'm already almost dead with the first bomb. There he's dead. And now we move on to the second. I'm using Alpine Draft because it's a lane uh, attack. It deals damage to all enemies in front of you in a straight line. So I basically just line up all my enemies and then just hit them with that over and over. Act 1 is not bad. Act 2 is where it gets annoying because now we're going to have to juggle four of them. Now, what I like to do is I like to knock them kind of all towards one. But you can see I'm already starting to get... Some of them are getting kind of high. I'm going to have to attack him. I'm going to die. If any of their casts get off, you immediately die. And that's the downside there. It's... It's all about time management. So let's go into it again and we'll see what happens. Now, they are weak to wind attacks, and Sonic Boom casts really fast, which is what you saw me using last time. The only thing that I think casts faster than that is just your plain auto attack, which you can just run up to them and bonk them. They still go flying because they have knocked back from everything. So, for an example of that, bonk. 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 I took too much time. So again, if you're going to do something like that, you really do need to just basically give one attack. I tried to do two off of the guy off of the last one, just to get them lined up a little better. But you really need to do um, just one. So the other thing you can try and do is you can try and basically just uh, race them for damage. So like here I'm using just Sonic Boom on one. I got him all the way down. 
So now I can use Sonic Boom on the other. I personally find it easier to group them. But if you want to just attack them one off in the first round, absolutely doable. So the second round we're going to do some bonks and we're going to maybe sprint this time. See if we can get a little bit extra time in there. There's bonk. 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 So now I've got them all basically to a point where I, they're all kind of grouped and wind damage are taking or dealing so much damage to them that this is now no longer a problem. And there's the last one. So that one is the first legitimately kind of tricky one, but it's still a gimmick as long as you can bunk them, as long as you can get them into a group, just Attack with conals, attack with lanes, attack with whatever you can. And next thing you know, they'll be dead. They're weak to wind, come in with your wing damage. Alright, so the next one we have is Plant of the Opera. This one seems like it's going to be a boss fight straight out the gate. Lo and behold, it's a gimmick. It doesn't think, like you don't think it is, and then you see why. And it's a gimmick. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Ice Spikes. Then I'm going to attack one of the Roselets. All the other Roselets attack me. Ice Spikes reflects the damage and they die. The second fight is actually a legitimate fight. That said, it's not a hard fight. Especially if you know that Ice Spikes does what it does. So for him, we're not going to use Ice Spikes right away. Ooh, I got hit by that, and that was a big hurt. I need to heal. So he's going to do these big attacks called Inflammable Fumes. And it hurts. But you have plenty of time. Note, whenever he's doing Spore Sack, he's going to spawn these flowers. That's your cue to cast Ice Spikes. And just like that, all the adds he spawned are dead. Don't be afraid to constantly heal yourself in this round. This one, you're going to take a lot of damage because of Inflammable Fumes. Uh... Just make sure you're getting ice spikes up, make sure you're dealing damage to him, and he'll fall before you know it. If you want to deal extra damage to him, come in here with water-based attacks. He's super weak to water. Yeah, and as you can see, this has been basically a pretty straightforward fight. He's doing Spore Sack again, so let's get out Ice Spikes in preparation. He's doing a secondary Spore Sack after, so make sure if Ice Spikes doesn't fall off. It didn't. Alright, so they're all dead. While he's powering up this big attack of his, I'll do some big attack of mine. Once again, Serpanaka does nothing to him.
I did White Wind a little too early. The one downside to White Wind, it's a huge waste of MP, especially if you're under half health. But as you can see here, he's almost dead, so he's going to power up for this, and we should kill him before he gets it off. And there we go. So that one seems tricky, but again, as long as you make sure that you heal after every big explosion that he does, and you're making sure to get your ice spikes off, then... The ads are nothing, you never need to focus on them. And the boss himself, water attacks will really make that quicker. Alright, so let's move on to the next one. The next one is Beauty and a Beast. So, this one kind of teaches you some interesting things. Most specifically, it's going to start off with three ads. Two of them will be petrified. So you don't have to worry about the two Votarigas in the back because they can't hurt you right now. One more attack should get rid of him. So now we can line up the Votarigas, which they have 30 seconds on their petrification. And here I'm going to use Black and White Knight's tour. They combo off of each other. And you see I'm just melting this one in front of me. It's already down. So now we have the second one. He's still got 13 seconds left on his petrification. I doubt he'll even get there. Just like that, not a problem. So now we're going to go into the second. This is actually just a straightforward fight. Um, nothing really tough about it. Just go at it like you would any other normal fight. She is going to spawn some adds, but honestly, more often than not, if you're somewhat paying attention, you should be able to actually, if you have a lot of spells like I do, you can actually get her real close to dead, if not dead. Uh, make sure you don't look at her when she does her... Gaze attack. Look at that. Dead before she could summon any of her adds. It's just a straightforward fight. I know I didn't really show off a lot of what she does there because I killed her really quick. But there's not a lot you got to do with that one. Alright, so now we're going to go into the next one, which is going to be Blob in the Woods. Hey, this looks a little too easy. It's a gimmick. So for this one, you're going to need an overworld spell that I know some people think is tricky. Uh, this is a spell that is required for the Azomagia fight. It's called Loom. So basically what's going to happen is you're going to attack these guys and they're going to blow up. You just got to stand on the other side of the wall, and you're fine. Just like the, uh, the towers in the other slime one, where we blew up the slimes around them. As long as you're on the other side of the wall, you're fine. Act 1, piece of cake. The tricky part will be in Act 2, if you don't have Loom. If you have Loom, cakewalk. Alright, so here we're going to go into Act 2. As you can see, there's four of them, and now the only wall you really have to guard yourself is this wall here, in the, the cube in the center. So what we're going to do is we're going to attack one, and you can see he puts heavy on us. With this, we can't move like at all. But boy, can we loom. There, another one aggroed onto me. I guess we better kill him, huh? Oh, I didn't quite kill the first one. Can I drop this where to hit him? Yep. Okay. 
So there you got to see me kind of fixing my mistake a little. Uh, certain spells you can actually kind of angle around corners. So now we're just going to loom over here. We got one left. A couple attacks will take care of him. He applies heavy. Once again, I didn't quite get him. That'll fix that. And because we're behind a wall, he will explode, and we'll just win the fight. Just like that, another one in the books. Alright, so for the last one here, we're going to have the Me Nobody Nodes. But I'm going to have to change something real quick, because we need a specific spell for this one. And this one, I feel, is far enough worth mentioning that I'm going to do this in a very notable way where you guys can see it. Acorn Bomb. You need it. You need it, you need it, absolutely need it. You will lose this fight if you do not have Acorn Bomb. So the mean nobody knows. Very early into this fight, he's going to spawn an ad. When he spawns the ad, use Acorn Bomb on it. If you do not, it will kill you. Immediately. It spawns in with a buff that makes it super strong for 30 seconds. You can't outrun it, you can't dodge it, it will hit you, you will die. Acorn Bomb puts it to sleep for like 40 seconds. By the time it wakes up, it's a little baby weakling. So let's go ahead and start this fight off. We're just going to hit him with some big attacks right out the gate. Outside of that one thing, this is a pretty standard boss fight. Here's high voltage. You have plenty of time to disrupt that. And here comes the ad. Acorn Bomb. And he's asleep. Now, the... Bestial Node will do an attack that is basically a large circle around him, like a donut around him. So as long as you're staying relatively close to him, you should be fine. Here he's going to summon a few more adds. There's Superstorm. That's the uh, attack I was mentioning earlier. So now with all of these ads here, we can basically just spam Ram's voice. I need to get rid of high voltage. If you feel like you're taking too much damage, you can always heal. All right, the two serpents are almost down. So again, back to just a normal boss fight. He really only spawns the two waves of adds. So as long as we just focus on getting them both down right now, that should be all we're going to see. Let's get him to stop doing high voltage. Go ahead and get rid of that add. He's doing one last super storm. But he didn't even get there. So again, that's probably the first truly difficult, straightforward fight. It has a little bit of a gimmick to it, but it's not a problem if you know Acorn Bomb. Acorn Bomb can be learned in Central Shroud from any of the giant trees. Uh, if you go on a world tour that I take you on, that's my thing where I take all the blue mages I teach uh, out on the world map to learn all the spells, you'll have Acorn Bomb. And it's fantastic. It's the only time you'll ever use it. All right, so that's the end of 11 through 15. I'm going to cut this video here, and we'll come back in in the next one for 16 through 20. Hey, Sevi. And yes, I, I know. It infuriates you that I play Blue Mage the way I do.
All right, let me get set up for the next couple of rounds and see what I need. Gross. 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 Yeah, that one's not bad. And the joke. Oh, we're going to end this with a joke, people. Oh, this is going to be great. Um, what do I need for these? I don't think I need anything for that. I have everything I need for that. I have everything I need for that. Okay. All right, that's a combo setup right there. All right, let me get this recording started and we'll start into the next ones. All right, welcome back. We're gonna be doing rounds 16 through 20. And uh, this is where it's gonna start getting interesting because if you're doing all these in order, by the time you get to round 20, we're going to do a really, really dirty, cheap trick. But you'll have to have cleared one other round of Mass Carnival in order to have all the spells to do it. Uh, but let's go ahead and start with Sunset Boulevard. Now, these videos are going to get a little bit longer as they go on. The first one was only a couple of minutes. Now they're getting closer to 15 to 20 minutes. And that's because these fights are getting a little bit more difficult and they're becoming more like actual fights. But if I'm not mistaken... Okay. So the, th the trick about these guys... I had to double check and make sure. The trick about these guys, they hurt. They hurt a lot. But they're really slow. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit them from far away and just don't let them catch up to you. You can also bait them out one at a time. So as long as you only attack with single target attacks, you should be fine. Abyssal Transfixion here is great because it adds paralysis, which can just straight stop them. We all hate when paralysis does it to us. When it does it to them, fantastic. If they're getting too close, you have more than enough time to run far away and get off that last cast you need. All right, so act one is pretty straightforward. You figure out the gimmick is they hit you really hard, but they move really slow. Act two is gonna be a boss fight. And I believe during the boss fight, he's going to spawn the Cyclops as adds. But uh, I wonder if I can cheese this. You know what, let's find out. I'm going to hit him with a really strong spell here. Yep. So what I did there was off guard, moon flute, uh, tingle, which raises the potency of my next physical attack by 50%. Whistle, which raises the potency of my next physical attack by 80%. 
And final sting. I guess I could do a fifth finger on the sand. Final sting is the final one. It hits them for a lot. Now that we're getting into the harder fights, you're going to see me start doing this combo a bit more often. It just straight up ends a fight. If you have all of these spells, which again, the only one you might be missing right now is Moon Flute, but you can get Moon Flute by clearing 20 rounds. You should have all of the rest of these spells just easy enough. And surprise, it kills a lot of things in one shot. So let's go ahead and move on to the Sword of Music. This one's a gimmick, and it's not a very fun one. If you watched my video for Azomagia and Siegfried, these basically teach you about the reflect mechanics. One reflects physical attacks, one reflects magic attacks. You can see on the thing right here, it'll tell you which one it is. Repelling spray counters physical attacks, repelling spray counters magic attacks. If you memorize this icon, that'll be super helpful. So you'll know sharp angle, that's going to be counters magic. Rounded angle, counters physical. And so with that, let's go ahead and get this round started. And we'll get both these guys killed. I personally uh, like to leave the physical guy for last. Because I feel like there's just so many magic attacks that you can do to get rid of the magic one right out the gate. And there I go, casting almost every single attack that I shouldn't be against him. So that's one down. Then we move on to the second. Again, swapping over to physical attacks. Just making sure to kind of dodge whatever he does. And there you go. Act one is down. Alright, so now we have Act 2. It's basically just going to be a boss fight, and somewhat through the boss fight, he's going to summon the uh, Magitek Claws from the first act. They will still have the magic and physical reflections on them, so you just need to quickly examine them, find out which is which, and make sure that you get them killed as soon as possible. That being said, I believe he has a physical resistance, so I'm not going to use the final sting combo on him. I don't believe it will do as much damage. So one of the other things to make note of is he will do Magitek Field. Make sure you stop him from doing that. And he will use another attack called uh, Grand Strikes. And you also want to make sure that you stop him from doing that. So Grand Strikes, he's going to attack once, twice, and then a third time even faster. I oh, guess only twice. Why are you not dead yet? So this one can get a little busy, especially if you're focusing on trying to take care of the adds while also dodging all the attacks and making sure that you stop um, the main boss from using Magitek Field. 
the good news is, once you're done with the ads, he never spawns them again. So this will be the end of the ads. And then I can go right back to focusing on the boss. Boss has a weakness to electricity, as do both of the others. There isn't any physical electric attacks, so you may want to get rid of the physical one first so that you can focus on hitting everyone else with um, something like Electrogenesis or Glower to just quickly take care of both of them. with Magitek filled again. Make sure we cancel that. Get in some kicks. Get out of Magitek Ray. And there we go. So even again with the slightly stronger fights, um, there shouldn't be any problem as long as you just kind of focus on making sure the big uh, interruptible attacks interrupt them. The ads focus on getting them killed first. More often than not, the ads are more important than the boss. The only time where it's not is if you know you can kill the boss before the ads can do anything to you. So the next one we have is a gimmick fight. It's been a while since we had a good gimmick fight. I personally don't like this one. It's an easy fight, but it's very much a gimmick fight. It kind of takes a little bit of time, and that's why I don't like it. So you'll notice that there's all these fire sand kegs. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to bait this guy into attacking us near a fire sand keg. Because they explode. His attacks are big. They deal a lot of damage, but you can basically bait all of his attacks. And the fire sand kegs will deal damage to him. Now, it's hard to tell, like he doesn't, his attacks aren't telegraphed, so it could be hard to tell what he's going to do for each of his attacks. But you can kind of see, he'll draw back a hand. That's going to be a big swipe. He's got another where he'll... Okay, so he's going to draw back his hand. That's another big swipe. He'll do another where he basically gets into a pose. So this is going to be... That poses his fireball. And then his third attack that he'll do is uh, a different pose where he kind of bends down to get ready to charge at you. So this one. The charge has some knockback. But you can see I'm basically baiting him into each, uh, attacking each of these fire sand kegs. And that's basically done about half of his health. Now, this won't kill him all the way but it will get him down a decent amount. You can use the knockback from his charge to get you out of the range of the kegs, but all the other attacks, you have to make sure that you, um, you actually get out of the way yourself. Once all of the kegs are done, he'll use Bone Shaker. And then he'll just continue attacking you. At that point, it just becomes a uh, standard fight. I thought I was going to have him, but I got a low damage roll on that last Abyssal Transfixion, and it killed me. So again, as long as you play it safe, don't stand near him. Um, bait the attacks to all the fire sand kegs. You should be fine. So here he's going to charge me.
Here we got the claw. Here he's going to charge. Claw again. Oh. So I'm hitting him with Abyssal Transfixion, which is inflicting paralysis, which means it can cancel him out of his three attacks. And then that basically just gives you chances to get free damage on him. You do have to be near him to bait some of these attacks. And you do want to make sure you're standing near the fire cakes, uh, fire sand kegs. Ooh. Took a lot of damage from those two attacks. But I should be able to do this. As long as I don't get hit by that. Nope. So again, part of the reason I don't like this is your attack deal so little damage to you, and the gimmick is you want him to blow up these barrels. All of his attacks are non-telegraphed, and it just kind of gets a little annoying. It's just a slow fight. You want to speed it up however you can, but there's just not really many ways to speed it up well. So here I'm going to get him to dodge at, or charge at me. And I'm going to start him going on the outside this time. So he's going to do fireball. This time I'm going to not use Abyssal Transfixion. I actually got him with two cakes there. See, and the downside there is he used Fireball, but he was too far away from the Fire Keg that he didn't get hit by it. Now, the interesting note, if you do kill him before he uh, runs out of Fire Kegs, then you will have to actually kill the fire kegs yourself because they still count as enemies and they do have to die before the round is technically over. So there, that killed him. And now I have to blow up these last barrels. And that ends the round. I had two sloppy first runs of that, but you can see if you play it safe, you play it calm, it takes a little while, but it's very easy. You can do it while spamming one attack. Um, Sonic Boom is a good one because it gives you a lot of room for moving around in quick casts. Act 2, same thing, but there's two of them. So now you kind of got to watch what two of them are doing. The thing to note here is you do actually have to watch what attacks both of them are getting ready to do. And you're trying to bait both of them into attacking barrels. All right, so that's one down. And only 
two barrels left. And that should do it. So again, that one's a little easier. They're a little weaker. They don't have as much health. And with two of them, it goes a little faster because you can bait them into attacking the barrels more often. I don't like that one. That's one of my least favorite ones. It shows up in weekly challenges so often. I really don't like it. Okay, so for this next one, we have uh, Reflective Rebecca. She's a morble. She can only be hurt by physical attacks. Well, she has up a thing that she will cast that makes it um, to where she can only be hurt by physical attacks. Interesting thing to note, at the beginning of the rounds for the ones that are have Reflex up like that, if they don't already have it up, you can cast Off Guard and get a sp uh, spell off before they have a chance to get their... Uh, before they have a chance to get their reflection. So big things to note here. She's going to be a morble. She's going to have bad breath. Make sure you don't stand in that cone. Awful breath is the same as bad breath, but it's going to leave like a dot on the ground that you don't want to stand in. Very weak to physical attacks. Very quick fight. So, uh, you guys remember that, that combo I told you about? It's about to happen again. So we're just going to wait here a few seconds for my off guard to come back. Off guard, moon flu. I'm not going to get tingle up in time. Whistle, final sting. And just like that, the second round she usually will um, spawn some ads that you have to run right up to the edge of the electric barrier and look directly in between two sets of them because they all have gaze attacks. But you could just final sting her and she dies. I don't know why you would do it any other way. It's pretty simple. And Miss Typhon, uh, if any of you guys have done the Hildebrand quest, you will know that this series of fights uh, very much reminds you of Dragon's Neck. You're going to fight Typhon, Ultros, and then Typhon and Ultros together. However, it starts with only Typhon in that last act. So we're going to go ahead and get this one started, and I'm going to show you guys an easy way to get an achievement on this round, because there is an achievement uh, that I find really funny. So we're going to start this fight off the way you would usually start off a fight, just dealing damage. He's going to have a lot of knockback attacks, but he's very weak to physical damage. So as long as you have some physical attacks, piece of cake, no problem. So next we're going to fight Ultros. Ultros is also a little bit of a pain. Weak to fire, but you don't need a lot of fire attacks. Let's just... Uh, Hit them with some hard spells. So you can actually learn blue magic spells in Masked Carnival. Uh, if you don't want to do the Hildebrand quest and you've never seen these guys fight, you could actually learn a lot of the spells from this thing. Uh, the spells that they cast specifically, like Aqua Breath there, you can learn that from this fight. So... The other thing to note is, he's going to try and do Imp Song. He already tried to do it once. Here he's trying to do it again. Do not let him cast that. You will sorely regret it.
Outside of that, this is a pretty straightforward fight. Dodges attacks, hit him with whatever you got. His attacks are pretty easily telegraphed. He, he'll do Imp Song every now and then. Just make sure you keep hitting him. Alright, one more should do this. Okay, and so now we move on to the combo fight. Now, in the combo fight, he will actually... Um, Ultros will join in, and then he'll spawn giant tentacles on the outside of the arena that will basically slam down and can hurt you for a lot of damage. You can get an achievement if you finish this round without killing any of the tentacles. Uh, fun fact, you don't have to kill any of the tentacles if they never spawn. Moon Flute, Off Guard, Tingle, Whistle, Final Sting. And he's dead. And just like that, this, uh, this bonus right here, Trouble with Tentacles, is what you need to end up getting to unlock the achievement. The achievement is called Octopath Traveler. It's okay game. I have feelings about it, but I know people like it. That said, you're starting to see that uh, when you have a lot of spells, these fights can kind of become jokes. All right, and so that is uh, up through round 20. We're getting into the final stretch here. Uh, the next one's going to be a short one. We're only going to do 21 through 24 since I already did a video for 25. And then we will continue on. What do we got coming up? Chimera. That's a fight. Behemoth stuff okay <laughs> all right so that's just chimera I need sticky tongue for that should do I don't think it matters for him and for you I also don't think it matters All right, let's get this going for the next one. All right, we're back at it again today. We're going to be doing rounds 21 through 24, considering we already did 25 in a separate video, uh, because those ones are needed to complete job quests. So we're going to start with 21, Chimera on a Hot Tin Roof. 
this one's pretty easy. You start with some imps, then you move on to a chimera. If you've done Cutter's Cry, which I would hope that you have, it's one of the main dungeons you have to do, you're familiar with chimeras. So we will just start this out. Let's go ahead and just get rid of these guys. We don't need any of that. A lot of these early ad phase ones, you can just skip with uh, Ram's voice and Ultra Vibration. Much in the same way that it's like, oh, hey, I'm going to fight this boss and I'm just going to use the final sting combo. So here's a Chimera. Ram's voice, go away. Dragon's voice, you go in. It's the same song and dance everyone knows. Start off by just hitting him with some basic magic. So again, Ram's voice, we're going to go out. Does he follow up with Dragon's voice? He does. And considering I've already got him to 40%, or 58%, 48%, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, combo him down. Oh, and I messed up. I went and stood in the fire, and now I'm suffering from Moon Flute. I'm just going to go ahead and count this as a wipe, and I'm going to redo this one. I thought he would be a bit more of a, of a struggle of a fight, but he seems pretty squishy, so I might be able to just pull off the whole combo and one-shot him. Let's find out together. All right, so again for the ads, Deep Freeze, Ultra Vibration. Piece of cake. So then we move on to the second round again. Just out of curiosity, let's find out. Moon Flute. Tingle. Whistle, and Final Sting. Okay, so you can't Final Sting and kill him in one shot. I'm just going to go ahead and wipe this video and start over. All right, we're coming back again, and we're going to be doing rounds 21 through 24. We're not doing round 25 because we already did a video for that, uh, since it is needed for a job quest. Uh, so let's go ahead and roll, roll in. Now, this one is going to be pretty simple. We're basically going to uh, pretty much ignore the ads in the first act. with a little bit of the second axe on medicine. So we'll use Ram's voice to do deep freeze. Ultra vibration kills them immediately. <laughs> and just like that, they're down. So now we move into the second act where we will be doing um, a little bit of a chimera fight. Shouldn't be too much of a problem though. So we're just gonna go ahead and start off with uh, a dot. We'll do some big magic. Do some kicks. Give us enough time to get out of there. Go in for Dragon's Voice. And just like that, the Chimera is down. He's pretty squishy. It's not that hard of a fight. Uh, he will summon in those imps, but if you have enough big spells, you can just take him down. Alright, so now we'll be going to Here Comes the Boom. This is another gimmick fight, but it has some weird gimmicks to it. 
uh, I'm going to highly recommend that you have some kind of pulling mechanic, such as um, Sticky Tongue. So all these guys are asleep, and you just basically have to one-shot them. In the second phase, you'll be fighting a big bomb, and the big bomb has a mechanic that you can kind of cheese it and skip it, but at the same time, I, I kind of want to show you guys because I know I've seen a lot of people struggle with this. So we're going to try and do this fight pretty normally. So, you'll remember we had another fight very similarly to this. Uh, for this part, you just find the opening. You've got plenty of time. They'll summon a bomb. The bomb is asleep. Kill the bomb just like in the first round. The big thing to note will be there will be a point where they summon a bigger, uh, like a different bomb. And that's the one we have to watch out for. Now again, you could use the final sting combo here and probably just skip a lot of this. Big flashy attacks don't show me where I need to go. Okay, so we got into our safe zone. I'm going to go ahead and heal up. Bombshell drop drops a bomb. Now this bomb is different. This bomb we need to yank over to the boss so that the boss gets hit by his attack. Because the boss is doing an attack called Burst, and that will kill you. However, you can cancel it by using the Blue Bomb's attack. So here he's going to drop another one. This is one of the ones that's asleep. Just kill it. Get out of the way of its attack. And then from here... We just have to finish attacking the boss down to nothing. So the big thing you need to know there is the big bomb enemy will try and use a uh, burst and it'll kill you. But you can yoink the blue bomb over to it and stun it out of that. So that wasn't too bad. Now we're going to move on to 23, which is Behemoths and Broomsticks. This is a straight up boss fight. You're going to fight a Behemoth. You will need, if you're doing mechanics, Diamondback. If you fought Behemoths before, you know that one of their things they do is they drop Meteors. Usually you hide behind a rock or something that they also drop to save yourself from the Meteor. You don't have a rock. You just have to take it. You can see they're pretty beefy. Alright, so here comes Comet. I think I did that wrong. So, Comet, you should be able to dodge. I didn't need to use Diamond back there. Oh my. And because of that, I have Volnups that were causing me a lot of damage. So you absolutely don't want to get hit by Trounce. Um, that's what gives you the Volnups. But we'll go into this and be pretty good for a second round. Also, I feel like this video will be really short if I don't have these second rounds. 
All right, so let's try this again. So here he'll use Trounce. Here comes Comet. And so for this, we basically just kind of stand out of the way of everything. He's going to drop another Charybdis. That's kind of bad placement for that. And then he'll do Comet again. Alright, so we'll... Bait is Trounce. Alright, here we go. Ecliptic Meteor. So I'm going to heal up and Diamond back. Still hurt me a lot. Diamondback heavily reduces the amount of damage I take. Immediately come out of that and cast uh, Lucid Dreaming to get some of that MP back. And he's going to go straight into Comet. Alright. Baited out the Trounce, and I have my little bitty safe zone. And this should be enough to finish him off. There we go. So as long as you manage to... Um, so that's probably one of the first really difficult fights because if you're not very good at feeling out and baiting out some of the attacks, uh, you could find yourself pinned between the Charybdises, the Meteor Drops, and his Trounces. And if you get hit by a Trounce, or if you get a Volnup stack at all, you're probably going to die. You can get him down to about 30% and start using the Final Sting combo, and that should take him out pretty easy. Um, but just if you get to the point where you have to get to the Meteor, Ecliptic Meteor, make sure you're healed up, use Diamondback. It's still going to hurt, but it won't be a guaranteed death. All right, so now we just have one more, and uh, this one's not too bad. The difference to know on this one is weaknesses not necessarily reflects but weaknesses the viking is weak to magic the magus is weak to physical then you have the arena scribe which we're not going to really fight that guy then you have the actual boss fight and he'll pull in the magus and the uh viking from the second round or from the first round so let's go into it and we'll uh, finish up this video with one last good fight. So again, knowing that he's weak to magic, I'll start off with Matra Magic on him. Again, a spell you probably won't have. That one is for getting, um, I believe, 100 of the 104 spells. And then we know he's weak to physical, so I can use uh, Abyssal Transfixion to take him out. And there we go. Act 1 is complete. We're moving on to Act 2. So, Act 2. Oh, hey. Can't freeze him. I do not want you to silence me, so we are going to off guard, moon flute. Ooh, I don't want that. Does that kill me? Yep. So that's the trick there, is he's going to kill you. You're supposed to diamond back through that. I don't know why I thought he could be uh, frozen. I think I have to final sting him which is fine, 
because that's not a problem. Yes, I know the durability of one or more pieces of my gear is low. Shocker, it doesn't really affect me. Here, I'll just go ahead and fix that right now. Did I not repair all? There we go. Okay. So then technically, I believe it's these guys then that I can... Uh... Oh, it's one of them. So you can Ultra Vibration on the Viking since he's weak to magic. And then focus on the Magus with physical attacks. So now I'm going to go ahead and just, again skip this phase, uh, this act for act two by using the final sting combo. So again, it's gonna be moon flute, off guard, tingle, whistle, final sting. And he's dead. Now, I know I've been using it for the third act of a lot, but even if you use it in the second act, it still counts as your victory. You come back to life for act three. So now act three, it's going to be a straight up boss fight. And because I used off guard, I do not have it active. So I'm going to go ahead and use Song of Torment to get this started. Get some kicks in. Do not want to get hit by Page Tear. It's kind of not telegraphed, but it's just a big frontal attack. Magic Hammer is also something you don't want to get hit by, uh, but it is a spell you can learn. Gale Cut will be a just frontal attack, and then he's going to spawn all of these. What you want to do is kind of position yourself for knockback so that you don't get hit by any of the Gale Bombs. And as you can see, we've already knocked him down pretty far. Uh, he usually will spawn in the uh, adds, but he's dead. So the hard one there, the, the really difficult one, is the middle round because of that uh, condensed Libra triple hit. Condensed Libra will give you a physical vulnerability. Triple hit will kill you. You're supposed to diamond back that. You can just skip it with Final Sting. All right, and that was rounds 19 through or 21 through 24. Like I said, we've already done 25. So now we're going to get into the four more difficult rounds. 26, 27, 28, 29 in the next video. 29 is the most difficult one in my opinion. And then there's round 31, which I'll be doing a special video for after that. So uh, join us next time for rounds 26 through 29.
All right, let me double check that I know what I'm doing with these. <laughs> I These fights don't ever show up in the things. So I never know what I'm doing for them or not. Uh, I should be fine. Worst comes to worst, I can just restart the video over since I'm recording it. Yay. Okay, so... All right, welcome back. We're down to one of our last couple of videos. This is going to be rounds 26 through 29. Uh, expect this video to be a little bit longer. These fights were added uh, as part of the level 60 uh, increase, and they're a little bit more difficult. Granted, we've now gone to level 70 since then, so I might be able to beat them a little easier than the last time I did. You'll find that anything past uh, 20 and lower so 25 and i guess higher 25 to 31 in the mass carnival will never show up in weekly challenges so these ones not a lot of people want to do or give a lot of information on doing so i, I figure this video might be super important for that reason uh, you'll also be seeing me not using the cheese mechanics from the others such as the final sting combo uh because I think it's important to see these fights done in their entirety. Specifically because you really only have to do them once. So here we have a Mirror Knight. to him or am I doing something wrong here? Nope, I am doing something wrong here. Can I freeze you? Nope. Am I supposed to... Right, okay. I know what I'm supposed to do there. I'm gonna start this video over. I need eerie sound wave. All right, let's go ahead and start this video over then. All right, so welcome back. Today we're gonna be doing uh, rounds 26 through 29 of Mass Carnival. Expect this video to be a little longer because these are fights that were added after the increase to level 60, so they are a bit more difficult and a bit more, uh, a bit more strategic that you kind of have to know what you're going into. So for this first one, uh, the Mirror Knight is going to put a debuff on himself that you're going to have to remove, which means you're going to need um, Eerie Sound Wave, which is a spell you get in as a slaw uh, to get rid of it. Outside of that, pretty standard, basic fight. For the first phase, at least. So here he's going to use alternate plumage. That gives him the debuff. We'll use Eerie Soundwave to get rid of it. Otherwise, he would just basically stop taking damage. Stop him from using Caber Toss. Hit him with all of our big spells. And one last spell just for good measure to finish him off. So again, this is basically kind of trying to teach you... A lot of the Mass Carnival stuff is there to try and teach you mechanics for Blue Mage. This is there to teach you that if an enemy seems too strong, you can use Eerie Sound Wave to get rid of those effects. So now we have Papa Humbaba. 
and I'm going to wait five seconds to get off guard back up. All right, and so now we will get started on this round. He's going to use Raw Instinct, which again is going to be a buff that gives him, I believe, all critical attacks. We'll just heal out of that. And that's his thing is, he hits really hard. If he has all criticals, he hits even harder. Right, I forgot about those. So if you get hit by the thunderclouds, because um, they will move around, gonna kill me okay so the thunderclouds are gonna move around there which is gonna be a bit of an annoyance but you can absolutely get through it just make sure you keep an eye on the thunderclouds um, if you get hit by them make sure you remove the electric dot uh, with exuviation as soon as possible all right so Go ahead and we'll start this round off again the same way. Hit him with some big attacks right out the gate. Airy sound wave to get rid of his buff. More big attacks. Stop caper toss. And finish him off with the last couple of attacks. All right, so Act 1 isn't really a problem. Again, just got to make sure you use Eerie Soundwave. Um, Act 2, also got to make sure you use Eerie Soundwave and make sure that you try and get those thunder clouds out of the way. So wait a little bit longer. And here we go. So here comes Raw Instinct. We use Eerie Soundwave to get rid of that. Dodge Body Blow. Go ahead and heal out of this. So now he's going to use Void Thunder. That's going to place the cloud. The cloud will move. And lets off a big circle. So now we just need to make sure that we don't let the clouds follow us. Ooh, that hurt a lot. Okay. I'm just going to actually end this. Okay, I may have to come back and do these last ones at another time, because I do not remember these fights as well as I thought I did. And I need to practice them and study up. But I got through the first 25 and uh, 30 as well. So I really only have five other ones to do a video on, and I'm going to split that up into two videos. But I think I'm going to work on uh, getting that edited up and set up to YouTube. Uh, anyone who came out to the stream, thanks for coming out. I think I'm going to call it here because I'm starting to get a crick in my back. And uh, I really need to study those last couple of fights before I actually put up a video or else it's going to be a lot of me dying, uh, especially when it comes to fight 29, which if Sevi's still in the chat, I know he doesn't like fight 29. But uh, thanks for coming out and watching. I'll have these videos uploaded to YouTube very soon and uh, have a good day, everyone.